Hello. I remember a long time ago, very long time ago, in my late teens, that's a long time ago, I remember playing on my Commodore computer, my Commodore 64 computer. I loved that computer. I remember playing on my Amiga computer. I remember as, as games began to develop, they got more intricate. They got more realistic. And boy, could they pull you in. I just, I would become addicted to some of the games that I played. Some of them didn't even have that, the, the kind of graphics that they have today. My goodness, the kind of graphics they have today is monumental compared to what they had back then. But then the graphics got better, and they got better, and they got better. Um, and then I continued, I, continued to, I continued to play them. I continued to play them over and over and over and over again. I played them, and I kept playing them, and I kept playing them. I kept playing them, and I enjoyed playing them. And that was all good. That was all good because at that time I was in school. I think I was in uh, junior high, high school. I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any responsibilities. So coming home and doing my homework and then relaxing, maybe playing some basketball, maybe, maybe play spades, maybe play other things. And when we weren't playing outside, we would, be, we would retire to our home and play some video games. This was long before the online thing where you could play with another person. And long before that, we were able to play, we were able to play, you know, for ourselves. And I really, really enjoyed that. And as I look back at that, I enjoyed it so much is that that's all I did. That's all I did. And I didn't even realize at the time that that's, I was obsessed with that. I was totally obsessed with it. If, that if I would have been doing other things, it would have taken me away from those other things. I didn't know because I just enjoyed playing the game. And anybody that would have played with me, I would have pulled them away from what they were doing to enjoy playing the game with me. But now, several years later, it's different now. Seven year, several years later, I am now retired. So I got more time to play games when I want to. I can do whatever I want to do. I can wake up when I get finished sleeping. I can do whatever I want to do. But I embarked upon getting involved in a business from home. And I wanted to make money from a business from home. I wanted to help people in this business that I work from home. So I didn't want to do anything that was going to pull me away from that task, you know, which is probably why I have not embarked on playing games online today. You see, I did that so long ago. I know what that, I know what that does to you. It pulls you into it. I mean, it sucks you in. And then, you know, this person defeats this stuff and then you gotta, you're not gonna, you're not gonna defeat me. I'm gonna come back at you. I gotta beat that. And it's a sense of accomplishment. It's a dopamine rush to your mind. You say, man, I felt good to beat that person doing that. It feels good. Sort of like the same feeling I get when I go ahead, and I'm not trying to beat anybody, but the feeling of bringing on an affiliate or the feeling of um, encouraging a customer to join my team to get the, oil, the CBD oil or to get the essential oils, like this package right here of essential oils, you know? I can encourage them to, 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 to buy this, you know, and they can have their, they can get one of the oils and spread them in their home and on a diffuser and make their home smell good. That makes me feel good. Or maybe I decide to use a CBD oil. That makes me feel good. Or, you know, I do a little bit of investigation. I say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use vitamin D with my CBD because I have multiple sclerosis and they tell me that vitamin D is a boon to those of us with multiple sclerosis. So I have this, I have this vitamin D right here. So liquid vitamin D. Doesn't detract from what I already take, which is um, 1,500 milligrams of CBD twice daily. Um, but I take, take this, 
because I don't take any drugs of any kind, not even in any kind of prescription, not even an aspirin tablet, I can investigate other stuff that will impact my body. But it doesn't take me off of my CBD. I'm going to get that. Um, now back to the games. So I remember the, the Omega computer, then the Apple computers came out. And you get these, these graphics. Oh, my God. They can just pull you in. And you can actually play that stuff for hours and hours and hours. And guess what? Not get anything done. Not get anything done. You haven't talked to anybody that can you can become a customer. Or if you did, you talked to a few people. Everybody you talked to said no. Both of them said no, you're done. <laughs> Supposed to be a joke. You talked to two people. You didn't talk to 25 or 30 or 40. You didn't get that far. You got stopped in your tracks and you talked to three people that didn't like what you were doing. And they don't even have what you want. But you listen to them. You listen to them about their opinion about what, what you're doing. That doesn't even make any sense. What if I told you your job, the job that you do right now, they wouldn't do it? Would you stop doing your job? Not likely, because you have bills to pay. Not likely because that car insurance and that medical insurance and that cell phone bill, electric bill, water bill, is calling your name. So you wouldn't listen to them. But yet, you, you join a business, a, a at-home business, and right now, at-home businesses should be at a premium. People should begin to look at them a little bit differently now. You know, times of old, they might have turned their nose up at an at-home business. Now, everybody's at home, and they can't make money. And one of the first things they say is, well, you know, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm out of work right now. I ain't got no money, you know. And even, when they were, even when they were working, guess what? They said they didn't have money. Imagine that. So you had you working and don't have money, not working, don't have money. When are you going to have money? Well, we tend to have money for things that we want. You know, if Jay-Z, if you like Jay-Z, if you like Beyonce, if they were coming to your town or city and the tickets were $600 for a ticket to get to see them, you don't have $600 right now. That's out of your budget. But watch this. I bet you somehow, some way, there'd be a bunch of people that would get to watch them and then they're rich. They would borrow the money if they had to just to go see somebody else who's a billionaire play on stage. Imagine that. Well, that's the contribution that they make to society. A sports figure that throws a ball in a hoop, that's his, contrib his, his contribution. Or the WNBA, that's her contribution. Or a track star, that's their contribution. That'll make a person dig in their pocket and spend money they don't have to watch another person who's making more money than they will ever make do something. They're like living vicariously through that person, in a, in a sense. So my thought is this. If you send me, if you send me an invitation to a game on Facebook, to entice me or to encourage me to play with you as a harmless uh, entertainment or as a harmless diversion, this is a diversion. But to me, it's not harmless because to me, it's going to take me away from what I want to do in my business. Now you say, well, that's all you do is business, 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 business. I worked for 21 years of my life for other people. I often had to do things I didn't want to do for other people when I was in the military. Now I get to do what I want to do. I'm retired. My daily choice is my fourth stream of income. Let that sizzle in your spirit for a second. So I get to do what I want. And no, money doesn't buy happiness. It really doesn't. But what money does is it enables you to do more things with what you have. Because the number one argument most people make in marriage or relationships or in their family life, they don't have enough money to do the things they want to do. If they had enough money, it wouldn't necessarily make them happy. Just, just comfortable. So I don't play games inherently. 
because number one, I played them as a as, as as a youngster. I know what that's like. I know what it does to you. I know it pulls you away from what you need to do. Now, when you're a child or when you're a kid or when you're a youngster, that's all well and good. It, it can pull you away. It's a harmless diversion. But during the day, it's the only time that I have to reach out to people or to uh, obtain possible affiliates and make no mistake about it. Yes, the coronavirus is running rampant. Yes, people don't have jobs. Yes, people are unemployed. Yes. But do you know that in the month of March, I brought on three affiliates? They had to spend money. Two of them became executives in my business. Still the same circumstance, different states, one in Nevada, one in Texas, no, one in, one in Texas, and one in North Carolina. Still the same set of circumstances. What changed? My mindset. My mindset was of the nature of, well, these people don't have jobs. They, ha they are now forced to work at home. They got masks on, they, got, they, they put gloves on, but they still need income. And somebody's going to join me. Somebody, if I reach out to them, if I reach out to enough people, somebody's going to join me. That's my viewpoint. That's, my, that's how I think. Many of you might think, well, with all this going on, ain't nobody going to do this right now. And that's what you receive. You get a bunch of people that don't want to do because what you believe in your heart and in your mind is that nobody's going to join this right now. Everybody's broke right now. Maybe because you're broke. I don't know. Everybody, they're unemployed. They're not, they're not going to do it. And I'm like thinking like, why do you think that way? Well, it's because you're used to thinking negatively. You're used to thinking negatively so much that you bring on negative things that happen to you. You bring it on. Look at all the negative things that happened to you last month if you had any negative things happen to you. Guaranteed you dwelled on them first. And they happened. They happened. Every, you think, I'm, a, I'm probably going to get sick. You got sick. I'm probably going to be late. You were late. I'm probably not going to bring any affiliates or customers in this month because everybody's broke. You brought them in. How did I think? I thought, who am I going to bless today? Who is coming in my business today? I just checked my back office. Many of you probably haven't checked your back office in a while because you had no need to. But I check my back office every day to see what's going on. <clears throat> the first thing I saw was that I'm binary qualified. What does that mean? That means that my left leg, my right leg has sufficient quantity in it that enables me to be binary qualified, which means that I'm going to get a binary check, <clears throat> a binary check at the beginning of next month. I know that already. I can look and see what my binary amount is going to be right now. It's going to be higher than that because the month is still going. That's what I focus on. Binary commission. I focus on who I need to call or recall, or call, or call, or call, or call again to, to let them see, for them to see what I'm talking about. See, sometimes people are waiting for you to call them repeatedly so they can see how serious you are. You call somebody twice and then you say, well, you know what, then they're interested, I'm going to leave them alone. The person on the end of the line is saying to themselves, well, they must not be that hot because if it was that hot, they'd be on my behind. So, so they give up. I can't tell you how the number of people that I've brought into my business because I've repeatedly called them and called them. And they, you want to say nag? You can use the word nag if you want to. But I called them repeatedly because I knew that what I had was a gift. Now, I don't have the cure for cancer. I don't have it. But can you imagine if you had the cure for cancer and you knew that you had the cure for cancer? Wouldn't you come at people a little bit differently? Even those that didn't, didn't believe in what you were doing, if you knew that you had the cure for cancer? He said, look, you need to, you need to do this. This is, this is important. This is, I got the cure right here. This is a hot. But you don't treat the business that you have that way. And you don't have the cure for cancer. Don't get me wrong. But you treat your business like some little odds and ends. And you get around to it. 
or you place playing a game at a higher level than your business. Well, I tried calling everybody. They don't want to do it, so it's time for me to play a game now. Let me play this game for the next three hours. Certainly, that will give me some income. <laughs> let me go ahead and divert. You know, let me... Not the pain of calling people, the pain of getting hung up on, the pain of people telling me no, the pain of rejection. It, playing a game, I'm not going to get the rejection. It's easy. I can play this all day. I can watch TV all day. I, I don't have to go over here and follow up with anybody to get rejected. But then again, you don't receive the reward of getting payment either. See, in the three hours or two hours or one hour that you play a game, I can perhaps, maybe, could be, get an additional volume in my business. I probably perhaps could be, I can help one of my affiliates grow their team. Could be, I can find somebody new that could be a customer or an affiliate. I can learn something new. Guaranteed, all of you have not gone into your back office and watched all the training videos back there. Some of you don't even know what the training videos are. You go into your back office, you go to the left side of the menu, and you see, you scroll down to where it says train. Watch, when you watch all those videos, and you've watched all of them, then you can tell me that you're trained. Until then, you're not trained. And yet, you don't need to know all of that to begin to work your business. Some of you are looking for reasons as to why you're failing. Or you, you're not qualified to do this. You need more information. You need to more... No, what you need to do is open your mouth and ask somebody if they want to go, you know, say that you're going to send them a capture page. You follow up with them to watch the capture page. If they watch it, they, they like what they see, they join. If they don't watch it or if they don't see it or if they don't want to do it, they don't. Go to somebody else. Go to somebody else. Go to somebody else. That's what we do. The only negative thing about being in network marketing is that you have to repetitively go to different people. One person is not going to enable you to win. Now you bring me on your team, you be, you be you have a nice head start. Because <laughs> I'm going to work this thing till the wheels fall off. But I always keep the main thing, the main thing. My main thing for a time was getting to Las Vegas with my dog. So I had to investigate. They said, well, this, this place is not going to take you and your dog because your dog's not a service dog. If your dog was a service dog, you probably could go anywhere. Guess what I did? Went to the internet, searched, how do I get my dog? How do I train my dog? What do I got to do to get my dog to be a service dog? That, that was my focus. I began to play chess from that point on. Now, I could have played a game because it would have been easier for me to play a game than write on my calendar. But I decided to, to play chess along those lines. That was my main thing at that time. Then my main thing became, I got to move this furniture out of here, out of my house, into my new place. I got to move my car. That became my main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. So relentlessly, I had to get that done. Then my main thing was getting here and getting moved in with no furniture. Oh, my God. That was the main thing. Then when everything calmed down, the main thing again was working, reworking my business, meeting new people, and acquiring more people to build my team. That became my main thing. I kept the main thing, the main thing, which is why I don't get distracted. I never forget what my main thing is supposed to be. My next main thing is to get my girlfriend here in Vegas with me. She's got to move all her furniture from Wilmington, North Carolina to here in Henderson, Nevada. That's my main thing. What other main things? I got other main things. I don't necessarily only have one main thing going. I have multiple main things going. But they're the main thing. And I can tell you that at no time is do I have to forward anything to anybody because that's not my main thing. And no time do I have to play a game with someone because that's not my main thing. It's not going to help me. This is a diversion, but I can, I can use something else to be diverted by. I don't need to play a game to be diverted. So what I would encourage you to do is examine what your main thing is. Figure out what your gaps are. 
figure out what you who you need to call, who you need to talk to, what training you need to watch on YouTube, what training you need to watch in My Daily Choice back office, what you need to do to get good. And then get good. It's your choice. Stop labeling yourself like, well, I'll never be able to be able to bring people into business like James or Marie or Shannon or Aaron or whoever. You start labeling, you stop t taking these labels and wearing these labels. You know, I can't run. You know, you can't run right now. You've never been able to run. But I guarantee you, I let a pack of pit bulls out next door and they start chasing you behind. You will move those legs faster than you ever believe. Or well, if I told you, I said, well, look, if you can run from here to the corner, and the corner being a mile away, I will give you, if money is, an, if, if money is, a, is a, a motivator for you, at the other end of the one mile stretch, because you're telling me you can't run, but if you can run one mile as slow as you go and get to the end of it, there's $100,000 waiting for you. And that's if money that's that's if money is a motivator for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it, if if I said to you, if you if you run a mile, it'll be possible that you never ever have to work for anybody ever again. You have all your needs taken care of, and including your family and your children and everything. If you can just run one mile, would you run the mile? Or would you say, well, you know what? I've never been able to run. Forget that. I just I just, I just ain't getting it. No, you'd run that mile. You'd break your ankles to get that mile done so that you could not have to work for any human being ever again. You'd break your ankles so that you could go ahead and get that $100,000 or whatever it is that you want the most that you would actually do a run of one mile for. Even though you're telling me, well, James, I've got uh, flat feet. I can't run. Uh, James, I've never been a good runner. Uh, James, I'm not a salesperson. I never could go ahead and convince or attract a person to become a customer or an affiliate. I just can't do what you do. You just don't have the right motivation. You got to dig down for yourself and figure out what your motivation is and then do it. I believe in you. I believe in each and every one that's looking at this video right now. But you got to believe in yourself. We'll talk to you later.